Okay, this is the bowl that I threw a few days ago. It's dried to a point that's called leather hard, and now I'm going to trim it. Uh, when uh, I like to trim on the bat, I like a bat big enough obviously to have to hold the bowl. And I want to make sure that the whole first step is to make sure it's level. Quite often these bats aren't completely level without warping. The bat I threw on wasn't perfect. The bat I'm you know, trimming on isn't perfect. But I want the bottom to be level, meaning when I hold my tool down, there's not one side higher than the other. If it's not level, it'll never center. It'll go this way and that way. And So I've got it level this way, and I've got it centered this way. And I'm only centering where I'm going to be trimming. The rest of this bowl is not perfect. A bowl of this size or of any size is very seldom perfect from top to bottom. Actually, we're all very seldom perfect from top to bottom. But I'm going to make sure it's trimmed here and level there. And I'm going to trim this away to make a nice foot on, on the bowl. This trimming tool I've used, well not this one, but this brand of trimming tool I've used for a long time. Trimming tools are personal. I personally like this one. So now I've got it just following the side of the bowl. You notice this uh, board, this bowl is sitting just on a wooden bat that there's no bobs of clay holding it. There's enough moisture on this bat head to hold the bowl down. Now I'm going to cut a definite foot for this to sit on. This gives the bowl a nice definition on the wheel, on the wheel, on the table. It makes sure that underneath the bowl is an undercut. So you can't really see when you're glazing the bowl where the glaze end and ends and the clay starts. This is a dark clay, so I'll be glazing it with a dark glaze. Okay, now I've got that line. And also keep in mind that you do have a finite amount of clay. You can't keep trimming. There's a tapping sound. That's still quite thick. There's a lot of clay there. And for whatever reason, when you stop these, they move a bit. Anyway, so now... I'm not going to take any more off of that. And I'm going to make a foot for it to sit on. If you're when you're first starting, you can draw with a needle to determine the size of foot you like. And then I'm just going to take my needle, my needle, my trimming tool from the middle and go out in the radius to where I've made before the foot's going to stop. So put the toe in, and then I just pull. Notice how I'm connected. My hands are connected. My elbows on my knee, and my body's into my arm, my elbows into my shoulders, into my knee, and I'm all connected, and I'm just running on that radius. I like a definite foot. Again, we'll just a little bit more. I think a pot should look as tidy and as trimmed and finished on the bottom as it looks on the top. So now I've got a nice trim. And one thing I like to do is I like to undercut in here. One, it gives it a nice presence because the pot come, then drops down and has this angle. It also, when you're glazing, these are a bit of a challenge. If you're Dipping the rim or whatever you have, when it's bisque, you have a handle. There's something to hold on to for the bowl. So this is a nice bowl. It's, it's moved a bit, but that's okay. Now I've opened up all the clay when cutting it, so I'm going to seal it uh, by running a sponge over it. It brings up those little particles to the surface, and you can't really see where the trim started and the throwing ended. And what you want to, like I said before, have it as tidy on the bottom as on the top, so you don't want to see trimming lines or fingerprints or anything else. You want a nice, smooth finish. This is a kitchen bowl. It should look nice in the kitchen. Now, I don't sign a pot at this stage. I like to sign them when they're completely dry. I sponge it with a, if I get it wet, and then sign with a pen or a pencil. But I do like to make identifying stamps that says where this bowl came from. And there it is, it's trimmed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the board that I threw it on. And I'm going to wet the board and I'm going to put a layer of paper between my bowl and the board because what happens when it dries is it can stick right to the bat again. And if it's completely stuck to the bat, it won't shrink in the drying and you can get a lot of pressure cracks. 
that can show up either in drying or show up in the glaze. But if you put this layer of paper between your bowl and your bat, it'll stick to the paper and release much easier. Anyway, uh, that's trimming a bowl. I'm going to turn it upside down, and then you've got a hold of your bowl. I never actually touch the pieces when I'm when I'm trimming them. I always keep them sandwiched between the two bats. Okay, so Jim helped me turn it over. We didn't drop it, which is a good thing. And now it's really stuck to this bat, and it's easier if you try to lift it up. You lift up the whole bottom, the whole thing in the bowl, and it just falls off. It gets messy. But if you tap, it will release. You can hear the difference, and then it's off. And now I have I've made. It's not a mess of, but it was attached to the to the bat here, and I want just to tidy it. This doesn't have to be perfectly centered. I'm just going to sponge, so this bowl won't be that centered. But it, I'm not throwing the bowl or doing anything to it. I'm just sponging it, and I don't want to take the time to center it. So then I've got a nice, smooth finish from the inside of the bowl. The rim is smooth, and it's joined in the sponge in the outside of the bowl. And it's just, it looks tidy from top to bottom, and it's trimmed.